In this tutorial, we'll be going over alpha blending and alpha testing, which are further ways to use semi-transparent or cutout type objects in your scene. In this scene, we have a quad with a texture mapped onto it and a couple of primitive objects in the background to help illustrate what's going on. We're going to be utilizing the alpha channel of the vertex colors eventually, and we're using the second UV coordinate of this mesh, not the first, so we'll need a bind channels block. So we, we, will, we will be bind, binding the vertex positions. We'll also be binding the vertex colors. Even though we only need alpha, we need to bind the entire color, RGBA. And then we'll be binding the second UV coordinate of the mesh, second UV map, to all texture stages. Okay? So now we're going to look at the alpha channel that's in this texture. So that's what we'll be blending based on. So it looks like that basically mimics the shape found in the RGB channels. Then we're going to blend uh, into what's behind the mesh using the alpha channel. So we'll make sure to render into the transparent queue, as we learned about in the last tutorial. We'll go back to get the RGB channels to show up there. Okay, and we're going to be alpha blending based on the alpha of this pass, that is the alpha of the texture. In an earlier tutorial, we used this to match the lerp command, but in this case we're blending into what's already been rendered from other meshes and the background instead of something being rendered in the same shader. So let's go ahead and uncomment that, and then we'll go look at the result. Okay, so we are obviously having some blending going on where we had white here and there and there. Um, in the original, in the alpha channel from this texture, we're only seeing the texture itself. Where it's black, we're seeing um, the meshes in the background. We're also not seeing the grid there. We know that uh, the grid is only being rendered based on Z testing, so only in front of this object right now. So even though it's blending just into the background, the grid is blocked out. And then we have an area where the alpha is mostly gray, so we're able to see a mix of the texture and the shapes in the background. One thing we'll do before moving on is to make this mesh render from both sides. Now there are only two triangles in the mesh and they face forward. By default you cannot see the back of these triangles and in general this is a rendering optimization but not for a mesh like this which we want to see from both sides. So we can explore how to change that using the cull command which you can read about in the Shader Lab manual under culling and depth testing. So there are three options. Cull back is the default and that does what is known as back face culling which is the standard which means you don't see you don't need to bother rendering the insides of objects because you'll never see them but it uh, means you're only rendering one side of a polygon so you can render the other side of the polygon and we would do that by using cull front. So now we know that the normals of the mesh are still facing this way because this might not come through on YouTube, but I can see a square outline and a line going through uh, showing our two triangles and they're facing forward, but we're not seeing anything. We are seeing the mesh rendered on the back, however. So we don't see that, that outline here. and That's just how Unity does things when you select a mesh. And then the last option, which is actually what we want, is cull off. So now, we're seeing the mesh render from the front and seeing it render from the back, which is exactly what we want. So let's add another mesh into the scene using the same shader. So we're seeing now that we're not getting a blend of both. This mesh should be, you can see it blending uh, with the cube in the background. The white part of this mesh will not blend with anything. This has an alpha value of white and then the other three colors are various grayscale values so we're seeing a little bit of the sphere in each of the red, green, and blue parts. Our results are almost good. These meshes intersect each other at 90 degrees up here and this mesh in this case is in front of the four pixel mesh in the background. So we see a blend of the four pixels with the cube then we see this, this mesh on top and we even see this cube might be hard to see on YouTube again, but we can see a little bit of the cube through the purple area here. So that's all good. However, we should be seeing some of this mesh 
which is being rendered here, through this blue part, but instead we only see the cube. So that's an issue um, with the depth buffer again, where this blue, blue area, this white area, is closer to the screen than any of these pixels, and so when doing the depth test, none of these pixels get rendered when they're behind like that. So let's try to solve that problem as we did in the previous tutorial by using Z right off. And I am using two different shaders, almost the same. I'm using uh, two different cues because that way I'm able to uh, get predictable results. Otherwise, we might get the same result, but it would be unpredictable. So effectively, they're the same shader. We just have a little bit more control. So let's go ahead, turn Z right off on, you might say, add Z right off to both shaders and see if that fixes things. Okay, so now we have a blend, it looks like, of green here, green on top here. Everything's pretty good. This is all good. Things are actually looking pretty decent. We're not seeing any of this mesh, uh, purple, green, and pink mesh behind this white area. That should be blocked off, but we're seeing it blending with the green, the blue. We're not. This is all green color. So, hey, maybe we're 100% perfect, huh? Let's go ahead and move this mesh around to make sure we're good. Uh, let's see, we'll select this mesh. We'll kind of move it this way and rotate it a little bit. And let's see here. Wait, what wait, wait a minute here. This is all this mesh is supposed to be in front of that mesh, but it looks like it's rendering rendering behind. That maybe maybe I'm seeing things. Let's find out. Let's move this mesh in front and then have a look. Well, that looks fine, but it's not fine if we move this other mesh in front. So that's not the right result. Maybe we can change this by affecting the queue that we're in? See, we know we're rendering the 4-pixel mesh after the more colorful mesh because this is transparent for the really colorful mesh. Transparent plus 1 for the 4 pixels. So, because we're not writing to the Z buffer in either case, when this 4 pixel mesh shows up, then it's not going to take what's in front of it into consideration, so we won't see any of it. Okay, so let's go ahead and change that around. Obviously, that should be the right solution. Maybe make that render behind. That looks good. We're getting blending of everything as it should be. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at things. Wait. White is supposed to be solid. That's closer to the camera. Okay, so comes down to this. You can achieve the desired result, but not from all viewing angles or if the meshes are moving around or through each other when you're using alpha blending in this way. This is not a problem that has been solved by anyone yet, so don't let it get you down if you're having trouble that looks like this when you're using alpha blending. If you have a bunch of overlapping objects that you need to use alpha blending on, just make sure you're prepared to deal with this hassle as you'll probably need to come up with your own custom sorting method and appropriate shaders. However, if you're going for more of a cutout effect, then there is an alternative that might work for you. That says if you don't have the like grayscale values in your mesh. So that's called alpha testing, and we will get to that in the next video.